thanks. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, my fellow Americans, we have waited a very long time for this great wrong to be corrected, the great wrong of racial preferences. And I hope the Supreme Court this time finally does the right thing with the first step starting tomorrow in this uh, building behind me. Like some sort of Midas touch in reverse, well, uh, racial preferences harms everything it touches. Racial preferences are an injustice to the people who should have been accepted to university, but were rejected to make room for an applicant who was let in because of his or her immutable characteristic. But racial preferences also harm the kids who are not at the same academic level as their peers because they only got in to fulfill a racial quota. It is a grave injustice for students who put in the effort, who said no to a party or a dance, but stayed home to do their homework. It is wrong to, for such students to be rejected when they would have been admitted, but for our university's fixation on students' racial identities. Chinese Americans are especially unfairly penalized for their hard work and kept out of top schools such as Harvard and the University of North Carolina based on admission schemes that Harvard used in the 1920s to keep out Jewish students. But let's look at who else is harmed by racial preferences. All of society is also hurt when this happens. The common good benefits when the hardest workers find reward for their labor and have an in incentive to work even harder. And of course, the people that racial preferences supposedly intended to help are hurt by this execrable scheme. They are hurt when they drop into university programs where they cannot compete. This is called mismatch theory, and it demonstrates that minority students admitted to elite schools because of their race achieve worse economic outcomes than their peers who attended less prestigious schools. Affirmative action does nothing to solve the problems of why members of some groups are may, may fall behind academically. It does not address the bad public schools, the socioeconomic situation, family formation, or the high out of wedlock rate birth rates that hold people down, people of all colors. Affirmative action does not offer solutions such as school choice, but mandates by imperial fiat that a certain percentage of a classroom be filled with X category. But it is worse, much worse, for those in the officially favored categories who do belong in the top universities, of whom there are many, very many, those who have done the hard work, put in the long hours, who have sent no to parties, who have excelled, but will have to live with the suspicion that they entered a top school because of racial preferences. They do not deserve that stigma, and yet affirmative action assigns it to them. Racial preferences should never have had a place in America. They go against the ethos of equality of opportunity at the heart of the American dream. That's the reason they are so unpopular, as we saw in the California referendum in 2020 and in a poll in the Washington Post last week. The American people hate this unfairness. Ibram Kendi is very wrong when he says that, quote, the only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. My fellow Americans, we can't change the past, no matter what we do. And certainly committing an injustice in the present will not remedy a past injustice. It will only continue injustice in the present and in the future. We want and need better. And I get the feeling we're going to get better. Thank you.